Assalam Alaikum, Brother Zakir. Uh, my name is Dipali Temkar and I'm from Pune. I'm working as an incident manager with an MNC. I would like to accept Islam and uh, I would uh, want you to help me to recite the Kalma. MashaAllah, the sister Dipali, she's from Pune, working in MNC and she wants to accept Islam. Sister, before you accept Islam, I would like to make sure that is anyone forcing you to accept Islam, sister? Uh, no, brother. I've been reading about Islam since a year now. So I thought uh, this is the best opportunity for me. Mashallah. Is anyone forcing you? No. Is there any economic pressure? No. Is there any physical pressure? No. Because in Islam, forcing anyone to accept Islam is prohibited in Islam, number one. It's even prohibited in this country. That's number two. But if someone wants to accept Islam willingly, no one can prevent you from. And inshallah, as your desire is, I will read the kalma. And inshallah, you can repeat it, sister. Yes. And I'd like to ask you before you say the kalma, that do you believe that there is one God? Yes. Do you believe that idol worship is prohibited? Yes, I do. Do you believe that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Yes, I do. MashaAllah, sister. So I'll just recite the kalma and you can repeat after me. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasulu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is is the servant the servant and the messenger and the messenger of Allah of Allah mashallah sister you are a muslim and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and i pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you jannah it is good that you have been studying islam for one year and it is good you read the quran and the hadith otherwise if you have seen the media maybe you have never accepted islam so i pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may you accept your effort and inshallah grant you jannah Thank you, Thank sister. You. Thank you. Yes, brother. Hare Krishna. My name is Ravi Kant Pandey. I am 23 years old. I have completed my graduation from Kolkata University. I belong to Sanatar Dharma. So, I have no qualification to speak in the front of you. But I am trying to speak with you. I have one question in my mind. And uh, even I, I can speak wrong because I don't know English very much well. So please forgive me. Uh, my question in, in Sanata Dharma is also written that women should be protected in a child time by his parents and a young time by his husband. And after the mother, his elder son will protect two women. In Sanata Dharma says there is no love in this world is lust is there in this world. So love and lust is two different things and if you, it cannot be go in a same one platform. So our real duty is to engage the service of the Lord. And in a Sanatan Dharma, Arjuna asked one time to Krishna, Ki, Oh Krishna, please tell me what this uh, man are speaking. I don't know, I, I don't know so many languages, so please clarify me. So Krishna told to Arjuna, they are talking like a frog. Even a snack come and they eat, just like I come by death and I eat. So in this world there is no love, we are trying to satisfy it. This is a simply attachment we can say in Sanatana Dharma says, ki women attach with a man and man attach with a woman. So, uh, this uh, Sanatan Dharma, because in a Bhagavad Gita 5200 years ago came and 2800 years ago in a Bible came and 1400 years ago your Quran came. So Sanatan Dharma is coming by so many uh, millions of years. So I belong to, I am not justifying that our life is meant for simply engage the service of... What's your question, brother? I've read the Sanatan Dharma. I'll give my comments on Sanatan Dharma to you. I want to ask you, what is the question? Do you want to say that Sanatan Dharma, Hinduism also protects the woman? No, I am asking, so I, our life, our duty is to 
satisfied the women or satisfied the Lord or engaged the service of the Lord. The brother asked the question, is our duty to satisfy the women or to satisfy Lord? Yeah. The brother asked the question that what is our duty to satisfy the woman that is love, that is lust or to satisfy Almighty God? Before I come to your Sanatan Dharma, I will tell what Islam says. As Allah says in the Quran, I said in my talk, in Surah Room, chapter number 30, verse number 21, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for you, made from amongst yourself, so that you may dwell in tranquility, and He has put love and mercy between your hearts. That means Allah has created for you, of your nature, mates, your wives, your spouses, so that you may dwell in them in tranquility. You get tranquility, you get calmness. And Almighty God has put love between your hearts. Once, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that even having sex with your wife, it is charity. Sahabah asked, even having sex is charity? How? So the reply came, because you are having it lawfully. If you have it unlawfully with the woman who is not your wife, it becomes prohibited. So because you are enjoying lawfully, even that is charity, that is khair, that's a good deed. So having sex with your wife also, Almighty God rewards you. And you rightly said that there is love and there is lust. I too have read Sanatan Dharma and appreciate the oneness of God mentioned Sanatan Dharma. You know, Hinduism has got various different sects, you may be aware of that, various different denominations. The highest scripture, there is Shruti and there is Smriti. Shruti, according to Hindu scripture, means the word of God. And Vedas are the highest. They believe in one God. They believe Almighty God has got no images. I can give quotations. You can see my video cassette. Similarities between Islam and Hinduism. But should we satisfy the woman or should we satisfy God? Number one, I said in my talk, the basic aim of every human being, whether man or woman, should be to satisfy Almighty God. Now while satisfying Almighty God, you may satisfy the woman, you may not satisfy. If she's a good, pious woman, she'll be satisfied if you're satisfying Almighty God. For example, Almighty God says, have sex only with your wife. A pious woman who's a Mosana will be happy. But a lustful woman, she will not be happy. She will say, why are you following God? Follow me. She may be khutwa to shaitan. She may be a footstep of the devil. You asked me questions about Krishna. That Krishna gave advice to Arjun. Since you mentioned Krishna, he's supposed to be a role model for the Hindus. And we read in Mahabharat. You know, I've given the talk on similarity, but because you asked this question, what we read in Mahabharat, that when Krishna, when he goes on the bank of the river, very often when the woman used to go to have a bath, he used to take the clothes away and run away. For what? For love or for lust? Because he is God, he yes. can do... Suppose I am honor of... Uh, I am if God would like to rob clothes of women and run away to see them coming out, okay, come out without clothes, then why can't you and I do? If you can copy God, why can't you copy God? If we see, if you know this is the ultimate. See, we cannot copy God because God is on a different level. But if you consider Krishna to be God, and if God is doing something like taking away clothes of the women and telling them come out without clothes, can you do that or not? You can do it very easily. That's what we find in Hindi movies. You know, we find all this. What I'm trying to say, we should take the message which is right. I've read the Sanatan Dharam. There are many things which are good. Hundreds of good things, thousands of good things. But what is not good, you have to leave it aside. I've given the talk on similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Now you speak about Krishna, talk about love, talk about lust. I appreciate many things of Krishna, but not everything. Many things he said is right. He tells that be a Kshatriya, fight against injustice, even be against your relatives. He says that in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 2, verse number 31. Same thing in the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 135. That stand out for justice as witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it be against yourself, against your relatives, against your father or mother. Allah protects them both. So if what he's saying matches with my Quran, with the real word of Almighty God, I accept it. But everything I don't accept it to be the word of God. That's the reason what I do, 
This is the Furqan. Furqan is the criteria to judge right from wrong. And if you read this, this is the last and final revelation of Almighty God which was revealed to humanity. If you read this, I challenge you to take out a single mistake in this. The other books that we have, the other religious scriptures, because of passage of time, they have been changed. Interpolation, concoction. Who says that? Not I. The scholars of Christianity, they say that the Bible has not been maintained in the true form. The scholars of Mahabharat say that initially Mahabharat was a story told by the grandfather of Arjun to the people. Later on, the 8,000 shlokas became 24,000 shlokas. Now we have more than 100,000 shlokas. Interpolation, addition. So what has been added? I cannot accept that God Almighty, leave us at God, even the prophet of God can do such things. So what I say, this may be an interpolation. I respect the messengers of God. But if you say that these people are saintly people, no saintly people will do what I consider, okay, this may be an interpolation, this may be a concoction. So therefore, I request you to read a book which is 100% pure, without any interpolation, Allah has promised in the Quran, in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, that we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard from corruption. Almighty God has taken him upon himself that he will prevent any corruption in it. From this, if you read, you get the pure rights that the woman can have in this world. Hope that answers the question, brother. May we have the next question from the Gen Sai in the rear. This is uh, Shekhar here. I'm so grateful to the IRF that we get this opportunity to ask you some questions. And for the first time, I've uh, seen you, and I'm glad that I can ask you a simple question. I am a businessman, and one of my, or rather my only hobby, is uh, studying religions. So one of them, obviously, being the Quran. So m my question is fairly simple. Like, um, I really liked what you spoke about Aisha. That was a very uh, wonderful thing that you said. So um, my question is fairly simple. I'll make it very small. But I really hope that I have the opportunity to cross-question you after you answer me on your answer. Thank you. So uh, we see in Muslim, uh, book number four, number 2127, wherein it says, a part of it that is, uh, he stuck me, Aisha, on the chest, which caused me pain. Uh, further down, if you look at uh, Miskat al-Masabi, uh, volume 2, page number 690, repeated again in Muslim book number 9, number 3506, a part of it, I'll just get to the point, where an Umar is trying to say to the Prophet, or trying, rather trying to make him laugh, he says, Messenger of God, I wish you had seen the daughter of Kharija, where she asked me for extra money, and I got up and slapped her on the neck. God's messenger laughed and said, They are around me, as you see, asking for extra money. Abu Bakr then got up, went to Aisha and slapped her on the neck. And Umar did the same to Hafsa. Now we see something of a pattern coming in. Then uh, if we just jump to Quran chapter 4, verse 34. And those wives you fear may be rebellious, admonish, banish them to their couches and beat them. Now... As I understand from your talk, and that there is equal punishment for both man and woman, I'm not contending whether they should be beaten or not. My point is, uh, what is the right of the woman if the man is wrong? Because he gets to beat her up. Well, that's a very good question, and I give you the right to cross-question me after the answer. It is granted. The brother quoted Hadith of Sai Muslim and Mishkat al-Masabi. Do you know the relationship between Hafsa and Hazrat Umar? Well, I've not really got to the point that much. I'm st still studying. Do you know the relationship of Aisha and Abu Bakr? May Allah will be with them both. Her father, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. I'm asking you a question. Are you married? Yes. Yes. Do you have a daughter? Two of them. Two of them. Fine. I get if... to go to heaven. Sorry? I get to go to heaven. No. <laughs> if you bring them up correctly I, I remember with that. love I remember and that. compassion then you'll go to heaven otherwise not <laughs> but, just kidding, just kidding. but that is only righteous deed without demand you can't enter Jannah 
So for you to go to heaven, besides upbringing your two daughters correctly, you have to follow the laws of the Quran and the Sahih Hadith and be a believer. I understand. That we'll discuss after answer to you. I understand. After answer, inshallah. I'm asking a simple question. Suppose your daughter, if she wants to jump from a 10-story building, what will you do? I'll stop her. If she's adamant, what will you do? Point, yeah. So you get the point, very good. If she so, wants to jump, no, I want to go. I want to fly like Superman. Dad, you are preventing me from being a Superman. What will you do? Well, I'll, uh, I'll stop her, obviously. Will you slap her or not? If, if, if required. She says, no, I want to jump. What will you do? Well, I, I can ask the other way around. What I'm if asking, wife brother. Sees? I'm asking. If she wants to jump from the 10-story. I will hit her. If required. Not normally. You'll say, Are beti, jando na, Superman mat bono. Nei, bandhi ke abba. <laughs> jump maanne ke. Ab dekho ka ita uđti hume. I want to fly. One flap. A father is cruel to be kind. Yes. Now, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, anyone who does not love Allah and his messenger more than his own life, he is not a Muslim. Anyone who does not love Allah and his messenger more than his own life, he is not a Muslim. So there are many occasions what happened that sometimes they were disrespectful to the husband. Not a normal husband, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There were many occasions, not one occasion. There are many occasions. Hazrat Umar may Allah be pleased with him, and Hazrat Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him. When they came to know that one of the wives has caused pain to the Prophet, they were the father-in-law of the Prophet, but they loved the Prophet not only more than their daughter, they loved the Prophet more than their own life. There are many occasions. Which occasion you are referring to? I don't know. There were occasions when they came to know that my daughter has caused pain to the Prophet of Allah. How dare she does it? They being father, they have the right to slap. Not you and me. For us, they are the Muhat al They are the mothers of the believers. But yet, they were human beings. Even the wives of the Prophet. Though they were wives of the Prophet, they are the best examples. Yet they were human beings and they did make mistakes. Like the ayah recited by the Qari. So in Nisa chapter 4, 32, they want equal rights. There are verses in Surah Azab chapter 33, where the wives of the Prophet tell the Prophet, why don't you give us the luxury of this world? They objected. Why are we undergoing such a life of poverty? So Allah sends a revelation. If you want this world, I will grant it to you, but you will not get Jannah. The verse of the Quran says, I will free you. That means, if you want, I will let you go free. Divorce. Not that he divorced. And you can get the luxury of this world, but you won't get heaven in the hereafter. And the wives of the Prophet, they repented and they asked for forgiveness and Allah forgave them. So here also it's in context. And going against the Prophet is more bad than jumping from top. Jumping from top, your daughter will kill herself, that's it. Correct? But going against the Prophet is more bad. Did you get the answer? Uh, sir, but my question still stands. I understood your point. I haven't completed my answer. Okay, you ask the question, no problem. My, my question is uh, pretty simple. I haven't completed my answer yet, brother. All right. Because I know your question was in two parts. Then you quoted the verse of the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 34. Yeah. And said about wife beating. I want to complete that before you answer. Otherwise, you said, Akira answered half. I only answered one part of your question regarding Hadith. The second part is of Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 34. Exactly after... The verse that was recited by the Qari. After verse, which says, nisa, That the men are the protectors of the women. The verse says that if they're disobedient. If they're disobedient, then don't talk to her. After that, don't share the bed. Then the Arabic word is daraba, means beat her lightly. The Arabic word is beat her lightly, daraba. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be peace with him, said, when you beat your wife, you should not beat on the face. Point number one. Point number two, when you beat your wife, there should be no mark left on her body. And he gave an example, beating with a miswak. Miswak is toothbrush. In modern way, I will say beating with a handkerchief. Handkerchief. Now if you beat your wife with a handkerchief, it is symbolic. It is not wife bashing. Wife bashing is not allowed in Islam. Wife bashing means one shot on the face. Hit so hard so that the mark remains. She'll remember you for the next one week or two weeks. In Islam, wife bashing is prohibited. It is daraba means beat her lightly. That means, first you tell her she's wrong. 
you admonish her. Don't share the bed with her. Ultimatum. Last warning. Beat her lightly. Now, what I said for any crime committed, the punishment is same. Punishment is same. Beating lightly is not a punishment, it is a warning. Can you do the opposite? Can the daughter hit the father? What if your daughter slaps you? Will you like it? No. Why? Equality. Let me complete my answer. You talk about equality, if your daughter slaps you, will you like it? No. No. There may be occasion when you get lunatic, when you become very old, and if you want to jump and then she slaps you, I will agree with her, correct? Though you said, no, I'm agreeing you. I understand. I'm helping you. You understand, but you don't understand me. Uh, no, I do. I'm helping you. Okay. If you grow up and you become a lunatic, you become senile, you want to jump from the 10th story, your daughter will say, Abba, mat karo, don't do father, she may have to slap you. She's doing in good faith. Accept it. Right? Now here, where a husband is giving a warning to the wife, if the wife does the same, what will the retaliation be? Imagine, suppose a big... There's a massive person, bodybuilder comes and acts macho with you. If a small man comes, maybe you'll hit him. A macho person, Anil Swashnikar, comes and tells you something. Will you hit him? Will you hit him? No. <laughs> ah, though you may have a lot of guts, but Anil Swashnikar, no. Why? Similarly, since Allah says in the previous verse, man has been given more strength than the woman. So a physical warning, a symbolic warning, a man can give to a woman, a woman can't give to a man. A woman can't. There are other things. There are other things she can do. Such as? Such as, for example, if she has to cook food in the house, it's the duty of the husband to get market. She can refuse to cook. If you don't get market, I will not cook. She can object. Very well. She can object saying, I will not cook. It's an objection on her part. If, for example, he's not offering salah, offering salah is important, she can object nicely, with love and affection. My dear husband, please offer salah. Then she may get a little bit angry also, no problem. Getting angry with husband is not allowed. Unless it's for the sake of Allah and his Rasul. But not physical. She can't get physical. If she gets physical, there will be retaliation. It will never work. Imagine your wife slapping you, will you leave her? Fine, you may say, Jando. So, what do you realize? This is a symbolic beating. What the Western media has done, they portray as though it is wife bashing. Where is wife bashing? You know the Hadith also. So, because of that, Islam is the best way of life. It shows you how to lead life with your wives also. Hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm.